Welcome to another Birchfield Penny Art Center sketch break sponsored by Hyatt's All Things Creative. These are short 15 minute live sketching demos to give you inspiration and a break from your work or school day. You don't need any fancy supplies, just something to draw on and to draw with. Today, I'll be using paper, a variety of different pencils, and an eraser in case I make a mistake. Today's sketch prompt is organizing your thoughts. During this program, I will be showing quite a number of techniques leading up to how I use drawing to create my fabric collage portraits and quilts. I'm very interested in the work of Charles Birchfield because I think he was just about always drawing. And in many cases, his drawings began as doodles. You remember I said you don't need any fancy supplies. So things like discarded paper, newspaper, an old envelope will work just fine. Doodling will pretty much free our minds and we can do two things at the same time. While doodling, I could explain some drawing techniques such as cross-hatching or reiterating a shape similar to what Birchill did many times. When I do a fabric portrait collage, I generally start with a photograph of someone who matters a great deal to me. In this case, it's the artist Marsden Hartley. And what I do is make a large Xerox copy of a photograph and put a grid on it. One inch squares with numbers at the top and bottom and letters of the alphabet A to O along the side. Now, I mentioned using drawing to organize my thoughts and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick one square this square right here, J4, and look at it and analyze, look at it through the small piece of cardboard with one inch square cut out of it. I'll put that right over the, only that one square and just concentrate on that. I could use graph paper or simply draw a square. Now, if you look at it, we'll notice there's a point here and a point there for this curved line. So what I'll do is put a dot here, a dot there, and just very quickly draw that curved line. Noticing it has another lesser one, a little bit over to the side, a little bit wider. I'll put indicate that also and fill it in. I also notice it's darker in this section. I'll shade it in a little bit and considerably darker in this curve. Now, what I've done is establish values that I'll be able to use when I start to make a fabric piece for this quilt block. I've already let the thought process go through my mind, found out just where the points change, just the shape of it, a curve, and it'll be a, um, one more step towards completion. One thing I often do to think about the value, which is the shading, the light or dark in a piece, is I'll make a little grid of six, of six um, rectangles or squares. And let me demonstrate cross-hatching as I do this in order to indicate value. Let's say this is number one and this is number six. Okay. One is going to be white, okay? And I'll explain why this numbering system is important later. Now I'll put just a, a set of lines kind of far apart from each other on number two to number six, okay? Number three, I'm going to put another set of lines between three and six. And as you can see, one is very white, two a little bit of gray, third a bit darker. Let's do four, 
five and six. To the point where six is pretty much black. So we've gone from one white to six black. Okay, sometimes when I'm drawing a square, I will use this method, and you're welcome to use it too. Let's use this square right here, okay? Um, I'll put the curve in, and I'll put another curve, and there's kind of a white there. Now, I'll assign the numbers instead of shading it in. That could be a one, this could be a two. This is a six again, four, let's say five. Okay, so when I, I'll go to the fabric to cut and sew it together to make this part of the portrait. Uh, I've used that shorthand. It's kind of like Charles Birchfield when he drew. Sometimes he would draw a landscape and instead of um, painting it right on the spot, he would write down the color, cerulean blue or yellow green, something like that. I'd like to show you my sketchbooks to kind of give you some further ideas on how you could um, uh, use drawing as a preparatory medium for your, um, your own work. Um, with quilt blocks, uh, we have a grid usually, but it's what we do with that grid that makes it uh, important. And I think interesting is art uh, when we're working. I'm going to demonstrate my little technique in case I did not make it perfectly clear before when I was talking. And this is the portrait of the great American artist Marsden Hartley. And um, I just love the look on his face. The um, photography was done by a famous photographer who photographed a lot of American artists. So we have these um, very wonderful portraits. Now you can see pretty much the pace at which I'm drawing. It's pretty quickly uh, done. And I'm in many ways drawing what I see, but I'm kind of translating it into, um, you know, kind of art. You know, I mean, I wouldn't consider this a finished work of art uh, by itself necessarily, but we're still using all the elements of art, the line, the shapes, the form, the uh, repetition. As you can see, um, uh, I use a variety of different methods to make something dark, darker compared to lighter. And one thing is um, how close the lines are to one another. If they're very close, um, it's going to show less white paper and you'll have more of a, um, a dark shade uh, if that's what you're you know, desiring. Um, the other thing is the pressure of the pencil. Um, if we use the same pressure, be it light or dark, I mean, light or heavy or in between, um, you know, everything is going to come out with a kind of a sameness. Um, and um, if we want uh, greater contrast, um, as you can see, just in a minute or two, I've done eight of these little squares. Um, now, working at home, I would probably do it a little bit more slowly. Now, one trick, one tip also is um, if I use the pencil with my eyes and with my brain, okay, um, our eyes can only be either on the thing we're working from or on the piece of paper where we're making our drawing. So, um, we, uh, what I do is I put the pencil down on the paper, then with my eyes, I'm looking at where it is on the subject, and then I can kind of just draw it without really looking at 
the pencil when I'm drawing. Now, I mentioned using doodles um, earlier, and I think if we're always drawing, uh, always doodling, always making little, you know, figures, um, it definitely increases our ability to draw a great deal. It's really true. The more you draw, the better you will get. So even if you think maybe you don't have a drawing talent, um, have you really tried it many times? Uh, or did you um, kind of say to yourself, oh, I can't draw. I'll never try it again. Uh, so um, think about some of these easy techniques that we're using. Now, uh, I've only been drawing for a couple minutes, but there's um, 12 blocks that are uh, very quickly, very spontaneously indicated what is, um, you know, in the original. And what I usually do is then I look at the original and um, frequently it just needs some reinforcing, but all the lines are there uh, using this little square technique. Um, and uh, I'd say definitely um, try it. Um, just a um, piece of um, maybe heavy paper, draw a one inch square, cut it out with a exacto knife or scissors, uh, scissors work. Um, and um, you've got your own little window. Uh, if you noticed, I put some masking tape on it and I do tape it down because it's very easy to move it and end up in the wrong place. Some of the lines are very light and, um, you know, we can easily um, misplace them. Sometimes it requires a little going back. Um, this nostril doesn't look exactly right. So uh, we find that um, a little uh, working over it could really help a lot. This won't be considered a finished work of art, but um, rather something that's helping me um, in organizing my thoughts. Um, when Sometimes when you look at a portrait, um, such as this photograph of Marison Hartley, it's just too hard to, as they say, wrap your head around. Uh, where would you begin? Um, whereas if you break it down with um, little one inch squares, um, it's really very simple uh, to do, I would say. And um, I think when uh, I'm working like this, I'm always keeping this project in mind between the drawing and um, when I first get the um, fabric and start cutting. And I've um, become aware of some things that um, might be concerns. This is uh, the quilt piece so far of Marison Hartley's hairline and his forehead and a lot of lines in his expression. Uh, and this would be, um, I think, the top of his eyebrows. So um, this is um, something that I really need to, you know, spend a little time drawing each square before uh, finding the fabric and um, starting to cut and sew. One of the very important things is the amount of space that um, each part of our work uh, gets. And I did make this square be number 4E, and I'll write that down because it's easy to get them mixed up. I made it in fabric already, and um, what I'm gonna do is just draw, I mean, we're looking for shapes that um, appear. And in my case, I'm looking for shapes that are easy to sew. Okay, so um, what I find is I try to translate the imagery in the portrait to um, shapes that I can cut and sew together. And um, let me do one final one. I'll use that uh, numbering method to um, show you how you know that can be done. I'll use this block, which is um, G5, 
and I'll just do it with the numbers. Remember the um, little grid uh, with the values, one white, six black, um, shades of gray in between. Now we still have to draw the shape of the bridge of his nose, okay? And, um, and I'm thinking about ways that this could be cut and sewn with fabric because you can't do every single shape. Okay, I'm gonna call this a five, okay? This will be a three. This is a, a three, two, and a one, and a four, okay? So if we think about that as our um, grid from one to six with, um, you know, white to black, um, I immediately know what um, value of fabric I can use. Wow, this 15 minutes really went by fast. And um, I want to thank you for joining us. And I hope you've enjoyed the sketch prompt. Follow us on Facebook to get notification on our next live events.